Hey y'all, today we're going to be going through a breakdown of the dubstep kind of visual I made. It's something super light. It's not a tutorial. So for any of you that were looking for a tutorial to watch for a step by step to follow, um, feel free to comment below and tell me that you're interested in that stuff because this dubstep tutorial is a bit more intermediate. Um, but with this breakdown, you'll see a lot of the steps and patterns. You're not going to get the step-by-step -step buttons to press. But I think if you've been around Blender for a little bit, a week or two, you won't get lost with this. So let's just go ahead and dive in. I'm going to take you through each step in terms of matching the sound, um, how I did some of the visuals, how I did some of the camera work. And this will be a bit of a longer video, but I'm happy to have you here. So strap in and let's just dive on in everyone so we're in this project file right now and there's a lot of things going on but the way I'm gonna look at this is let's watch the animation and then I'm just gonna take you step by step with the camera first um, effects and then where I got the model from and I think honestly it's like pretty simple to be honest and music and I forget about that part so usually on the right hand side is the animation <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay. So you've seen it. If you've come from TikTok, you've probably seen it before. So it's no surprise here. Um, first thing you and I want to dive into here is probably you're wondering, Micah, how do I get music into Blender? So you're going to go ahead and click video editing. What you're going to go ahead and do is on add within your sequencer so I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a bit easier for you so within the video kind of area you're gonna click add and that's gonna click uh, sound and once you add the sound you're gonna want to definitely display the waveform you're gonna want to pretty much captivate the part you want as well in terms of the song you can see the songs a lot longer here but I just went ahead and dragged it out and cut some of the parts out because I just wanted to get the drop for TikTok and whatnot so you can see, turn off display waveform, right. off on. It's going to be off by default, and that'll get you started there. Okay. So once you have that, you have your music, and you know pretty much like where to go. From here, what I did was I brought in a model. So I brought this model from. I have, I have a few bookmarks on 3D, but I think I took it from. Yeah. 3D scans. Um, there's another site. I'll link these below if you're interested. I believe it's Discover STO. And there's like a whole bunch of just like um, free stuff that's just 3D scans of like sculptures and things like that. Okay. Then after I brought the sculpture in, I was like, okay, Micah, well, this thing doesn't look like much without some lighting. Um, I went ahead and I played with the grid kind of behind it. So all this is, is you'll see here, I believe I can turn it off and on. It's just a wireframe, a wireframe modifier and a plane. And like, it can get pretty, pretty crazy if you have it not like wireframe when you're strobing things. So I suggest doing that. So all it is really is wireframe modifier then within your material elements, you're gonna go ahead and you don't need to do this whole mix shader and layer weight thing that I did. I don't think it really does much, to be honest. Oh, it has a little bit of a gradient. And I connected my emission value to just um, a value node, which you can just bring in. And once you have that, what that will do is you just wanna, let's just go ahead and Hold on, okay, this works. Within your keyframe, kind of like graph, zero to one, just zero, one, or 80. And you can see I kind of just have it and I just match the beat. So what I did was keyframe the zero to one and I just copied and pasted, copied and pasted, copied and pasted. And that created that strobe effect that a lot of us look for sometimes and that's that and you just change the color and keyframe that as well 
And that's pretty much the whole grid section. Um, the next portion that people are probably curious about, yes, there's some very default lighting going on here. Super simple, nothing, um, nothing out of the ordinary here. It's just some three-point lights. You just kind of rotate them. Um, I'm going to focus on the camera now. So for the camera, I found this way. I suggest looking this up on YouTube because I honestly kind of blanking out on exactly how I did this again. But you can essentially key in cameras, I believe. Um, and you would have them with markers. And then what it would do is you would go from using one camera and I just pretty much have another camera here that is just kind of like scoping around it. And what I did was I keyed in getting that second camera right at the drop. So it's just like, wow, wow, wow. And you get this, you get an interesting angle instead of it just being one angle the whole entire time, which is fine if you have a lot of movement. But what I wanted was just play around with having a second kind of angle here. And maybe you can add a third or a fourth depending on how long the animation is. This way, you don't have to render multiple renders because once you click that render button, it's going to switch those cameras in the animation. Um, one of the last things that I believe exist is this particle system here. So the way this particle system works, super simple. It's taking reference of two planes that I just went ahead and subdivided and kind of played with the vert vertexes to make it kind of look like flames or embers. And then you set up a particle system with a plane. The key thing you want to do here is make sure that the frame start is set to something well before the animation. That way it's not like you have to wait for those particles to get ready and be in the, the scene. And then you want to end it right around the same time, just so it's constantly flowing with a lifetime. Um, the one thing you're going to want to do here is turn the gravity off. Set it to zero. This way, once the gravity is set to zero, you see we have a wind element here. You're going to bring that in. That's shift A. And you can always get the force field stuff. With the wind, you're going to want to control the strength. And just set it in the direction. Super light. I have mine set to 1.2. And you'll see now you have these like cool embers. You have more than just like your statue. You have some embers moving and you could toss in some text and everything. And it's, it's, it's pretty neat. And the eyes for the model, I think all I did was, so essentially you assign multiple materials to one object. And I just selected the eyes within the editing flow. And that was that. And honestly, that's pretty much it. So. Once you have your music in, keyframe the strobing. Oh, that's not it. My fault. Um, the last thing that you want to do here is actually set up the camera. So you see my camera kind of boing, boing, like it's, it's popping in and out. All that is, if I remember. I believe it's just the Y coordinate going from one and the other. So you'll kind of see here. Let's just scroll in. So pay attention to the scene on the right. As you drag, you'll see right about here, it punches in and it just subtly moves out. And the way I did that was essentially what you would do is just keyframe you have your default distance your close-up distance keyframe the two and then what you would do is just like right click uh, handle uh, interpolation mode and I believe it was back shout out to milgram they really set me up with this one and then these two I believe I set it up to be more of a I think it was like one of these like a circular exponential and then it just kind of goes back slowly and then you just copy and paste you listen to the beat and you're just like okay boom boom like just keep it going and i just kind of duplicated it as it went on 
I think I played around with the Z location for something. Oh, for the camera shaking. So every time it punched in, I just shook my Z location like this. And now, I think that's pretty much it. And I did a little bit of composition effects here. A little lens distortion, a little difference. Um, that's pretty much it with the project, for, for real this time. Um, I hope this helped out. If anyone that's really curious, if you have any questions, let's be open and, and uh, discuss this. I think this kind of information should be out there. So I'm pretty active here on YouTube and I'll see the comments. So if you have any specific questions, let me know. Um, I could probably send the blend file to anyone that wants it. And yeah, thank you again for dropping in. I really appreciate all the love that has been given to this YouTube channel. I know it's been a bit of a hiatus for me, um, but I have some things I want to share with you guys. So thank you once again, and I'll see you around.